G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Saturday sort of afternoon here in Australia, so Saturday morning over in the States. And, you know, obviously there was that pullback on sort of Thursday uh, night. And, you know, all the, you know, the new people to the space are probably a little bit worried. And even some of the older people in the space are still unsure about what's going to happen. Look, no one knows exactly what's going to happen, but we have to have a look at the the overall sentiment of what's been going on in this space ever since, you know, we had the virus that went around the world. Now, here's something that helps me, you know, r remember what's going on and what is likely leading towards what the outcome will be. So record high backed Bitcoin delivery exposes institutional frenzy for Bitcoin. Now there's more to this that'll make uh, sense very shortly. Backed recorded an all-time high Bitcoin delivery in October, demonstrating a clear spike in institutional demand for Bitcoin. So it's October now, and let's go and quickly have a look at the chart. And we've had this. So we've had its kind of ups, and, you know, since October, so it started about here. Pulled down, pumped up, and then it's starting to go down a little bit, and people are getting worried, particularly because of this drop that happened back in sort of September. You know, everyone got worried, but it's still pushing up. And if we scroll out, I think this line here is going to be followed for quite some time. And it's because of stories like this. We already know about micro strategy. They got in, and they were getting in, I think, sort of somewhere back here. They were buying it at around about $9,000. Grayscale was still buying it as well. Then, uh, God, Square Cash App have bought it. And this is just, it takes one person to do something. And if they pull it off, someone else is going to be game and they'll do it. And then if that second person pulls it off, then a third, a fourth, and a fifth, and quickly everybody's doing it. So I believe that is what's happening with institutional buyers. We're going to hear news that more institutional buyers are getting in. And yes, we're going to have some pumps like this. And yes, we're going to have some pullbacks like this. But overall, I don't think this line here is going to be broken anytime soon. So could this pull back more? Yep, I think we could definitely sort of come down to about the $10,800 level. But really, I'm just, I don't think we're going to do it. I think it's quite possible we come back down to around the $11,000 level here before we sort of start to travel sideways and start to make our way back up. Now again, we go back to this story. This is why. Data from Arcane Research shows backed Bitcoin exchange saw another record high month from September 20th to October 20th. It's, I mean, I don't know how that is. Oh, from September, 20, I'm guessing 2020 to October 2020. So 2020, I was going to say it's only the 17th at the moment. So I don't know how they got October 20th. This follows a noticeable rise in institutional demand for Bitcoin from public companies in recent months. Back the digital assets payment platform and derivatives exchange is tailored for institutional investors in the US. It is operated by Intercontinental Exchange and that's the parent company for the New York Stock Exchange. When the volume of back Bitcoin futures market increases, which physically settles uh, Bitcoin contracts in Bitcoin, it typically demonstrates growth for institutional appetite for digital assets. As shown above, Cointelegraph and digital assets data reflect a significant surge in futures volume volumes across multiple exchanges in the month of October. So it's October now. We've had a bit of a kind of, you know, trading sideways and that we're slightly pulling back. But this says that it's just building. According to the analysis, the analysis at Arcane Research, 400 Bitcoin contracts are set to expire in October at backed. Month over month, the data shows a 14% jump from September. Back's volume and open interests are important in gauging institutional activity because it is one of the three widely utilized platforms by institutions alongside uh, LMAX, Digital and CME. And so the CME gap, that's where that comes from. As such, Arcane Research said that substantial increases in future contract deliveries on Back signifies rising institutional demand. I won't go and read the whole thing. You can find this on Telegraph if you want. But it basically just says, you know, data and metrics are showing that institutional uh, involvement in Bitcoin, and then that'll lead to other cryptocurrencies as well, 
it's only growing. So we go back here and have a look. Yes, we're gonna see these big pumps, but in the end, this is still on the up. We're not even close to going back down. I've seen some stuff and people are saying there's a chance we'll go down to 10,800 and then some saying even lower. 10,800, yeah, could do. I mean, look, technically uh, on this chart here today, if we came down to 10,400, we're still on a fairly good upward, mo upward momentum. Now it is the weekend and that's how we sort of got some of this stuff. So we get the sell off. Uh, it came on the Thursday. Uh, which was a little bit early, but I don't think we're going to pull back that far. Again, I don't think this trend line is going to be broken anytime soon. I think this will be the new trend line and it's going to continue for quite a while. And this will probably then start to go in a more up direction like this. Once we break the 12,500, it will start to get a little bit steeper. And I said this yesterday and I've said it a number of times. Once we get past this, and again, really, it's sort of here. Let's say we just round it up. Once we break that $14,000 mark, things are going to start to happen very, very quickly. There's still institutional buyers at the moment who are sitting on the sidelines and they're unsure going, oh, well, it hasn't broken this high yet. And this is the second highest high it's ever had. And so they're still worried that it's going to roll over and, you know, fall back down to God knows where. I would, you know... Anything's possible, but I don't think we'll ever see Bitcoin down here again. The whole market of everything would have to fall apart for that to happen. So again, we may well sort of pull down a little bit here, but I think eventually we're gonna make it up to this $12,500 mark. I think the next move that we make will be something similar to what we saw here. We'll roll over, we'll get some support for a while, and it'll possibly happen next week. And then we're gonna push up and we're gonna range, and this is just my personal opinion, we're gonna range between about 12,200, 12,300, and about 12,000, sort of six, 700. And it'll be choppy around here and probably come back down and retest this. It'll push through and then come back down and have a retest. And then once we push past this, the $12,500 mark, it's going to push up to this $14,000 mark pretty quickly because there's no more sort of confluence. We're already at it. So you know a tiny little bit here at around that 12,900, but I think we get back to here. We have a fairly good uh, rejection from here. Come back down and likely test sort of around this 12,500. It won't happen overnight, I don't think. It'll take a while, we'll reject and probably slowly but surely fall down. And then we're gonna start to push back up. And once we break this for the second time, I think it's off to the races after that. I think things are gonna move very, very fast. I don't think this is gonna happen uh, before the election. So it's not till November, December that I think we break this. And then we really, really quickly go from here. Hopefully the chart will, there we go. We go from here to here very quickly. I don't think it's gonna take long at all for us to get from above the 14,000. I think we might push through it the first time, we reject off, come back and test 12,500. And then the next time we break through the $14,000 mark, I think 20,000 gets covered fairly quickly. I'd be surprised if it takes more than a week or two to go from 14,000 when we really truly break through it. Maybe we break through it and get to about here and then come back down and retest it. You know, I could be wrong about getting a good rejection from here and coming back and test the 12,500. That's what I think, but maybe we just push right through and get to around about this 16,000 sort of $500 level and then reject hard and come back and start to test this. But I think once we get through this and you know, it, it's been back tested maybe, it's gonna quickly go to this mark here. I don't think we'll even stay here very long. I don't think there'll be too much people selling here. I think it'll just be exuberance and people will be buying heavily. And then, yeah, who knows where we go to. As I said, I think minimum sort of 70, 80,000 for, for the next peak high. And again, I think that's the minimum. I think that's easily doable. And then from there, 100, I think we, we can do fairly easy, but there's those key levels. I think there'll be some resistance at 100K. I think there'll be a number of people uh, selling at that sort of 100K mark. But if it can break through 100K, I definitely think that 150K will be sort of the next mark. 
Uh, and whether we go past 150 into the 200s and 300s that people are talking about, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But my sort of uh, conservative estimate for the peak of the next one is somewhere between sort of 80,000 to 150,000. So I think 150,000 can be uh, achieved you know, reasonably easy. I'm just not sure if it will make it there or go past it. But I definitely think I think sort of the the eighty to a hundred thousand somewhere in between there uh, will be the minimum of the peak. You know, it's to, to say that'd be a really low peak. But time will tell. Last but not least, let's go over to Coin Gecko and have a look. So market cap up, still around that three hundred and sixty billion dollar mark. And again. Just a little bit stagnant at the moment. We'll refresh this because things might have changed since we've been doing the start of this video. Now, still roughly the same there. Now, let's have a look. In the last 24 hours, what were the movers? So there are a few, a couple of double-digit ones. Stellar, well done. I think I heard uh, USDC is looking at moving over to the Stellar network. I thought USDC had moved to uh, another platform not that long ago and I'm, I reported and I just can't remember what what it was maybe it was Algorand or something like that again I'll have to go back and check but yeah I was quite confident that uh, USDC moved to another platform a while ago and I heard something earlier today that I think they're looking at moving to Stellar uh, I'll research that and I'll see if I can find that for tomorrow so that might be why Stellar's had a little bit of a pump in the last 24 hours and again, just kind of single digit moves. Well done to see, you know, Chainlink moving up, but over the last seven days moving up as well. So maybe it's found its bottom. We'll have to wait and see. Let's see if there are any big losers. So Filecoin. Yep. The people who were in Filecoin have been in there a long time. Uh, they're, <laughs> yeah, wanting to get their money. I think the ICO was done in 2017 or something like that. So it's taken a long time for it to come out and it's, yeah, people are quickly getting their profits. Ave surprising, down, but that may be an uh, indication there might be a good buying point coming up soon. Ren had a bit of a pullback, but still sort of, you know, 14.57% uh, over the week's not too bad. And then, yeah, again, the, the losses are just sort of single digits, so they're not horrid losses. That's a pretty bad one. And uh, that one's not great for Ave as well. But other than that, not too bad. Synthetics Network uh, seems like it's sort of ranging. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, uh, you know, whether it goes down to closer to that $3 level. But yeah, time will tell. But if it does continue to go down, uh, I'll be looking to get some more Synthetics Network. I just want to see it find a bottom. At the moment, it's just been tracking down for a while, slowly but surely. Uh, likewise with Aave, I'll have to wait and see. Uh, if, when it finds a bottom and I'll be for certain buying some more Aave. I did buy a little bit of Aave a while ago and a little bit of uh, Synthetics Network, but literally only a little bit. I think it was only like maybe $50 of each or something like that. So not a whole lot. But that's it from me. So yeah, oh, gas, ETH. There we go, 23 Guay. That's sounding a lot better. You know, it was up around the 200 Guay a while ago. So those layer two solutions, uh, that are rolling out uh, are obviously starting to uh, assist not ETH 2.0 but the layer 2 solutions that some of the bigger platforms have got on like Uniswap's uh, moving to uh, layer 2 Synthetics Network did move to a layer 2 I think Tether was moving to a layer uh, a layer 2 USDC did move uh, uh, but again I can't remember exactly where that was and I'll confirm with that information that they are moving across to the Stellar network. So yeah, things are, I think, you know, things are still looking great personally. Now people are uh, quite scared with the overall price, you know, taking a bit of a dip, but look, markets can't just continually go up. At some stage, they're going to have pullbacks. I really would be surprised if Bitcoin goes below 11,100, you know, down to that kind of CME gap, but technically maybe that gap already kind of got filled. You know, we'll have to wait and see. But I, yeah, I don't see it going below really 11,000, 11,100. It may well dip right down to it. And again, possibly the high 10,000s. But I think it trades sideways from there for a while before it makes its next leg up because of the institutional buyers that are getting in. None of these institutional buyers are going to be selling bulk amount of Bitcoin at the moment. They're going to be wanting to at least double, triple their money. Micro strategy, you know, they were getting in at basically 9,000, uh, sort of 600, 9,000, let's just say $9,000. They're not going to be looking at, you know, 
yes, they will be trying to uh, sell a little bit uh, to buy it cheaper as the market goes up and down, no doubt. Uh, you know, doing some good trading, but they're not going to be selling substantial amounts till again, bare minimum, let's say they double their money and then maybe they sell off, you know, 2% of their Bitcoin or something. Uh, but again, the point is then they've got cash. The whole reason they got into Bitcoin is because cash is going into negative interest rates. So they could sell their Bitcoin and then have all this cash, but then they have to find something to do with the cash. Holding on to the cash doesn't help them. So really, again, I don't think they would sell any uh, cash, any Bitcoin for cash at the moment and possibly not for a very long time. You know, if we go into negative interest rates and things like that, what good is cash to you? They are going to charge you for having it. That is how they stimulate the economy though. They force you to buy stuff, force you to invest. So, you know, I understand the, the whole negative interest rates, but that then means you have to put your money somewhere. So, you know, whether you want to go the route of stocks or gold or silver or whatever it is, it's going to have to go somewhere. A lot of big institutions, I believe, are now starting to bet on Bitcoin. And again, we go back to that article. I believe that is what's happening. I don't see there being any major dips from Bitcoin in any time in the near future. But again, that doesn't mean we can't have, so I'll zoom in, dips like this, but that's because it pumped up so hard. That really was just coming back and correcting from this massive pump. So if we have massive pumps like this, yes, we could have massive dips. And they'll just basically come back to reclaim some of that. But I believe this trend line is going to be held for quite some time. All right, Saturday here. I won't take up too much more of your time. Please hit that like button down below. It really helps my videos get out there uh, and seen the algorithm and all that. And hit subscribe if you're interested in my content. I'll continue to make videos uh, basically on a daily basis. I hardly ever miss days, but I do have a job and I have a family and sometimes things gets, gets, get in the way. Sorry, excuse me. But I will do my best to make videos every day and keep you informed of things that I see, what I believe the trend is, uh, and things like that. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Maybe some of you were on that game train today. And I'll see you next time.